Here we go. It's time to check out some of my absolute favorite cartoons with one small catch. These are the most embarrassing moments of otherwise fantastic cartoons. Because these cartoons are normally such masterpieces, it is soul crushing when the creators release an outright dreadful episode. These bad episodes might be our heroes acting so out of character that it permanently scars them in the viewer's eyes. Or the episodes might be overly cruel, self-absorbed, or just completely nonsensical. So let's check out the top 10 worst episodes of great cartoons. And more than ever, if you do like these episodes, I totally understand. It's just my silly personal opinion, and I'm glad you can enjoy these episodes when I can't. Anyway, on to the countdown. Number 10. Powerpuff Girls. Sunscream. You know those old government ads on TV that tried to scare you into never doing drugs? Sometimes in very strange ways. Well, they made an entire Powerpuff Girls episode like that. Except it's about sunburns. This episode is just excruciatingly uncomfortable to watch. Ten straight minutes of the girls very slowly moving across the room while they wail in agony over their sunburns. The writers dedicate a good quarter of the episode exclusively to showing close-ups of Blossom's convulsing sunburnt skin as she yells out in pure agony. In fact, their sunburns are so painful that they can't even put clothes on. So our three heroes fight crime El Naturel. But our heroes are helpless against the villains because of their sunburns. Okay, I admit sunburns can be freaking painful and potentially cause skin disease, but they don't completely incapacitate you from living. This is just silly. Then to top it off, we watch them peel off their skin. Thanks writers, I guess I didn't need to eat tonight. Uh, but I will say this for it. After watching this episode, I will certainly always wear sunscreen. So if that was your goal writers, Good job! And for number 9... Adventure Time. Dream of Love. Okay, now let's have an episode that consists purely of an 80 year old elephant and a pig making out. Doesn't that sound... Pleasant? We start the episode with Finn and Jake encouraging Mr. Pig to confess his love to tree trunks. Okay, I'm a little grossed out, but I'm happy for them. Moving on. No, wait, we're not moving on. They're just making out over and over again. This entire episode is just tree trunks and Mr. Pig making out. We even get close-ups of their tongues. Ugh. What were the writers thinking with this episode? Then the two are tragically split apart because they made out so much that they disgusted the town. <laughs> they then compliment this bowl of fecal beans with a tone deaf song from the 80 year old elephant and the pig. And for the final cherry on our unholy pile, we finish the episode with the two resuming making out. Did one of the Adventure Time writers really think that writing an entire episode dedicated to two senior citizens making out would be stellar Adventure Time material? Ugh, moving on. Number eight. SpongeBob SquarePants, a pal for Gary. Let's move on to one of the most god-awful Spongebob episodes ever conceived. There's a few real stinker Spongebob episodes out there, like Spongebob You're Fired or The Splinter, but very few match the beastly quality of a pal for Gary. This is the closest thing I've seen to animal torture ever in a cartoon. Our usually good-natured Spongebob is completely out of character. The imagery is very unnerving, and the sound effects of this monstrous horror pet are legitimately disturbing. <laughs> Gary is tortured by a monster, and Spongebob sadistically punishes him in return. And even as the monster slowly eats Gary alive, Spongebob still continues to punish him. None of the imagery is pleasant. Most of the episode we're looking down the throat of this leviathan horror. And it's basically just about watching Gary be tortured. I'm actually impressed at how uncharacteristically cruel this one is. 
Is this episode the big one? The one that made everyone think SpongeBob has gone downhill? It's entirely possible. Or is there an even worse one out there? And for number seven, Hey Arnold, Arnold betrays Iggy. This is probably the most reviled Nicktoon episode in cartoon history. The hostile reactions I get from friends for even mentioning this episode is just astonishing. And it's no wonder. I distinctly remember seeing this episode when I was eight and feeling distraught afterwards. The story is basically our hero Arnold sees his friend Iggy in bunny pajamas. When he accidentally tells others this, he spends the whole episode suffering humiliations to repay him. This is one very nasty trope we used to see in a lot of badly made cartoon episodes, where our hero continually cowers down and suffers humiliation to another character for no legitimate reason. Personally, I just get frustrated when I see this trope and just say, why doesn't our hero stand up for himself? Ah! I can still see that empty, miserable look in Arnold's eyes as he slowly walks through the jeering, mocking, tormenting town in bunny pajamas. Surprisingly enough, watching our hero be endlessly humiliated and jeered at is not pleasant to watch. This episode was so detested by the public that even the creator hated it. In fact, he personally asked Nickelodeon to stop airing it right after he made it. And graciously enough, they did. Thank Jeebus for that. And for number six, Powerpuff Girls, the city of Frownsville. Would you like to watch 11 minutes of the entire city of Townsville crying while the most annoying cartoon villain ever squeals into your ears? No? Well, I don't blame you, me neither. Can I just say that crying voice acting barely ever sounds legitimate? You really have to be a spectacular voice actor to make crying sound real in cartoons. Good evening, ladies and jerks! Uh, we just flew in from Las Vegas because we can! Hearing voice actors pretend to cry not only breaks the immersion for me, but it can be really insufferable. Imagine if I spent the whole top 10 list talking like this. It would probably make you want to knee me in the crotch until I keeled over. Ow. Not everyone knows this, but most of what was shown on Cartoon Network was the first four seasons of Powerpuff Girls. Seasons five and six got really bland. The voice acting of this guy is cringeworthy. <laughs> this episode safely fits into that special category of bad anime hentai English fan dub. But I actually did like the message behind this one, as terribly executed as it was. The one thing that's catchier than sadness is laughter. And perhaps that's the best thing to take from this episode. Number five. Steven Universe, Keep Beach City Weird. This one was a tough decision between this, Island Adventure, and Say Uncle. In the end though, Ronaldo was just even more irredeemable than that heinous opening in Say Uncle. The only three characters I don't like in this otherwise elegant, beautiful cartoon is Lars, Onion, and Ronaldo. But Ronaldo is in his own league of aggravating. He's loud, he's obnoxious, he's completely full of himself, and there's not a shred of humility in this guy. Even his voice makes me want to throttle this guy. Weird time, Petey! I'm doing big stuff! and we get an entire episode dedicated to him, with continual wide-angle lens close-ups of his face. Not only that, but he's dangerous, knocking Steven out because he thinks he's an alien. In a surprisingly unsettling scene for this cartoon, Steven is slowly inspected in a dark cabin by this train wreck of a character. The only part I liked was when we got to see Ronaldo get the crap kicked out of him by Garnet, Amethyst, and Pearl. I think I agree with Doug and Rob on this one. The Rebecca Sugar made this character so people didn't think her cartoon was too perfect. In case we tried to burn her for being a witch, Joan of Arc style. My only other guess for the reason Ronaldo exists is maybe it's a message from the creators to not end up like Ronaldo. Question your world, but don't lose sight of reality. And don't be a completely self-absorbed goon. 
Ronaldo is a giant wart on the face of an otherwise immaculate, gorgeous cartoon that I simply adore. Fortunately, in the newer episodes, he's nowhere to be seen. And for number four, Looney Tunes. See you later, Gladiator. This is by far the most painfully long, boring Looney Tunes cartoon I've ever seen. Which is impressive, given that it's only six minutes. How is that even possible? Later. How can you make six minutes of my life drag by so slowly? This is considered by many to be the worst Looney Tunes episode of all time. Going in, I thought, oh, come on, how bad could it be? It's Looney Tunes. But boy, was I wrong. Get this premise. Daffy Duck and Speedy Gonzales go through time in a time machine. How could you mess up this premise? You have Daffy Duck. You have the freaking voice legend Mel Blanc at your disposal. You could have just done a short of these two talking for six minutes, and it'd be more interesting than this. But the episode just drags on, as the two slowly walk from screen to screen, or simply announce whatever humdrum activity they're doing. Again, writers, you botched up Daffy Duck, Time Travel, and Mel Fricking Blank. For shame! And for number three... Adventure Time, Frost and Fire. Apologies, as I know I've already talked about Adventure Time, but I really just can't stand this episode. I don't think many people were as bothered by this episode as I was, but it single-handedly destroyed Finn's character in my eyes. Frost and Fire is this strangely in-depth look at Finn's character, but sadly, when we see Finn's character in depth, we realize just how shallow and self-centered he is. Humiliating and hurting Simon in order to get wet dreams. I mean, kinks aren't something we choose, and whatever you enjoy is fine as long as you're not hurting anyone. But Finn is going out of his way to make others fight and hurt each other, in order to get his rocks off. Dear Flynn Princess, you're just the worst. Your hair is bad, your feet smell like face cheese, blah 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 blah, let us meet up and fight on me. Sincerely, Ice King. Simon the Ice King is my favorite character in Adventure Time, so seeing him suffer like this really bugged me. Even when Flame Princess is injured and suffering, he's still thinking about his wet dreams. Even over 50 episodes later, I still don't like Finn's character as much after seeing this episode. I have nothing but respect for this cartoon. It's among my absolute favorite cartoons of all time, but I certainly had a lot less respect for Finn after this episode. And the second worst episode of great cartoons is... Mr. Garrison's Fancy New Vagina. Some people have probably picked up. I like South Park. A lot. There you go, Al. So when they take a nosedive, it really kicks me in the nads. Only South Park could get away with the amount of middle fingers they give to their viewers. But this one, ugh, you'd expect crude from South Park. But showing live action surgery of a sex change operation. How do you get away with that? Yet nipples are a no-no? What sense does that make? This made me so uncomfortable that I couldn't actually watch it more than once. Even splicing the DVD footage together, I had to take extra care not to accidentally view the live-action sex change footage. The rest of the episode is bad as well, with Kyle having testicles in his kneecaps, I do apologize for that visual imagery, and basically just freak show plastic surgery. Just talking about this one makes me uneasy and disturbed. In my opinion, of what I consider a classic cartoon series, this one is one of the worst. I can't think of another episode of what I consider a great cartoon series that makes me so queasy. And before we get to number one, I'd like to give a couple of quick honorable mentions. Fairly Odd Parents, It's a Wishful Life. While this series isn't one of my personal favorites, there was such a hostile reaction to this episode among fans that it couldn't not be mentioned. An episode dedicated to Timmy seeing how much better the world would be if he was never born. What could possibly be mean-spirited about that? This is another overused, bad cartoon trope that was never funny to begin with. Foster's home for imaginary friends. Everyone knows it's bendy. Once again, we have this trope I've never understood, where a villain will continually do bad things, and the hero will get continually blamed and punished for it. 
It was such a bad episode that the writer deeply regretted making it. But Foster's isn't quite one of my personal favorites, so I left it off the list. The Simpsons. Lisa Goes Gaga. Although perhaps not as classic as it once was, I personally think The Simpsons remains a quality, sophisticated show, which is freaking amazing since it's been running for over 27 years. However, Lisa Goes Gaga was appallingly bad and crapped all over our favorite Simpson characters. I covered it in Worst Simpsons though, so I left it off the list. Avatar The Last Airbender The Great Divide This episode is bad as we have to watch painful bickering between two tribes continually for 24 minutes. But honestly, I only thought it was bad by Avatar's standards, which is so freaking high that many cartoons can't even see them. So I left this off the list too. Anyway, here we go. And the number one worst episode of great cartoons is... SpongeBob SquarePants One Course Meal Wow. I really didn't expect any episodes on this list to fall into that special rotten category. But you've done it, writers. An episode about the slow isolation and torture of Plankton. And I thought a pal for Gary was bad. In this episode, we watch Plankton collapse into a deep pit of paranoia-filled despair, as he is continually traumatized by Mr. Krabs dressing up as a whale. Interestingly enough, Krabs doesn't actually have a reason for torturing Plankton. He's not protecting the Krabby Patty formula, he's purely doing it out of malice. He even stalks Plankton in his own home. 16 paranoia-filled days later. Plankton then breaks down into tears, followed by a paranoia-filled nightmare. <laughs> I just don't get it. Do cartoon writers just get possessed by evil satanic spirits when they make these episodes? And then Plankton tries to kill himself. Because, you know, Self-harm is such a kid-friendly topic. It's just... Ugh. I'd expect self-harm jokes from Family Guy nowadays, but... Spongebob? The show that is sometimes too sappy even for me? And Krabs is happy to hear Plankton is attempting to kill himself. That's actually kind of impressive, really. I mean, don't get me wrong, this episode is foul kitty litter that's been left out in the sun for too long. But just the fact that the writers could skip an episode about torture and self-harm by the Nickelodeon censors really is an impressive feat. If you didn't consider Mr. Krabs a sadistic, selfish, scumbag villain before, you certainly will after this episode. You know an episode has truly defiled a normally excellent cartoon when you start rooting for the bad guy. Congratulations, writers of Spongebob. Of all the cartoons I consider great, you've made the worst episode. And you did so with flying colors. Suicide, isolation, and torture. Yep, that'll do it. And we finish this disaster off by burying Plankton alive. Okay, that's it, I'm done. But as I mentioned, I like all these cartoons. Many of them are among my absolute favorite cartoons and molded me and many others growing up. As much as I nitpick, these bad episodes really are a rarity. And I can't wait to see what new content each and every one of these cartoons will bring us in the future. Do you think I missed a particularly bad episode of an otherwise great cartoon? I know there's a lot out there I did miss. If you think so, feel free to let me know in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. their sunburns. The writers dedicate a good quarter of the episode exclusively to showing close-ups of Blossom's convulsing sunburnt skin as she yells out in pure agony. In fact, their sunburns are so painful that they can't even put clothes on. So our three heroes fight crime El Naturel. But our heroes are helpless against the villains because of their sunburns. Okay, I admit sunburns can be freaking painful and potentially cause skin disease, but they don't completely incapacitate you from living. This is just silly. Then to top it off, we watch them peel off their skin. Thanks, writers. I guess I didn't need to eat tonight. Uh, but I will say this for it. After watching this episode, I will certainly always wear sunscreen. So if that was your goal, writers, 
Good job. <laughs> and for number nine, Adventure Time, Dream of Love. Okay. Now let's have an episode that consists purely of an 80-year-old elephant and a pig making out. Doesn't that sound pleasant? We start the episode with Finn and Jake encouraging Mr. Pig to confess his love to tree trunks. Okay, I'm a little grossed out, but I'm happy for them. Moving on. No, wait, we're not moving on. They're just making out over and over again. This entire episode is just tree trunks and Mr. Pig making out. We even get close-ups of their tongues. Ugh. What were the writers thinking with this episode? Then the two are tragically split apart because they made out so much that they disgusted the town. <laughs> they then compliment this bowl of fecal beans with a tone-deaf song from the 80-year-old elephant and the pig. And for the final cherry on our unholy pile, we finish the episode with the two resuming making out. Did one of the Adventure Time writers really think that writing an entire episode dedicated to two senior citizens making out would be stellar Adventure Time material? Ah, moving on. Number eight. SpongeBob SquarePants, a pal for Gary. Let's move on to one of the most god-awful Spongebob episodes ever conceived. There's a few real stinker Spongebob episodes out there, like Spongebob You're Fired or The Splinter, but very few match the beastly quality of a pal for Gary. This is the closest thing I've seen to animal torture ever in a cartoon. Our usually good-natured Spongebob is completely out of character, the imagery is very unnerving, and the sound effects of this monstrous horror pet are legitimately disturbing. Here we go. It's time to check out some of my absolute favourite cartoons, with one small catch. These are the most embarrassing moments of otherwise fantastic cartoons. Because these cartoons are normally such masterpieces, it is soul-crushing when the creators release an outright dreadful episode. These bad episodes might be our heroes acting so out of character that it permanently scars them in the viewer's eyes. Or the episodes might be overly cruel, self-absorbed, or just completely nonsensical. So let's check out the top 10 worst episodes of great cartoons. And more than ever, if you do like these episodes, I totally understand. It's just my silly personal opinion. And I'm glad you can enjoy these episodes when I can't. Anyway, on to the countdown. Number 10. Powerpuff Girls. Sunscream. You know those old government ads on TV that tried to scare you into never doing drugs? Sometimes in very strange ways. Well, they made an entire Powerpuff Girls episode like that. Except it's about sunburns. This episode is just excruciatingly uncomfortable to watch. Ten straight minutes of the girls very slowly moving across the room while they wail in agony or only cowers down and suffers humiliation to another character for no legitimate reason. Personally, I just get frustrated when I see this trope and just say, why doesn't our hero stand up for himself? Ah! I can still see that empty, miserable look in Arnold's eyes as he slowly walks through the jeering, mocking, tormenting town in bunny pajamas. Surprisingly enough, watching our hero be endlessly humiliated and jeered at is not pleasant to watch. This episode was so detested by the public that even the creator hated it. In fact, he personally asked Nickelodeon to stop airing it right after he made it. And graciously enough, they did. Thank Jeebus for that. And for number six, Powerpuff Girls, the city of Frownsville. Would you like to watch 11 minutes of the entire city of Townsville crying while the most annoying cartoon villain ever squeals into your ears? No? Well, I don't blame you, me neither. Can I just say that crying voice acting barely ever sounds legitimate? You really have to be a spectacular voice actor to make crying sound real in cartoons. Good evening, ladies and jerks! We just flew in from Las Vegas because we can! 
hearing voice actors pretend to cry. <laughs> Gary is tortured by a monster, and SpongeBob sadistically punishes him in return. And even as the monster slowly eats Gary alive, SpongeBob still continues to punish him. None of the imagery is pleasant. Most of the episode, we're looking down the throat of this Leviathan horror. And it's basically just about watching Gary be tortured. I'm actually impressed at how uncharacteristically cruel this one is. Is this episode the big one? The one that made everyone think SpongeBob has gone downhill? It's entirely possible. Or is there an even worse one out there? And for number seven... Hey Arnold. Arnold betrays Iggy. This is probably the most reviled Nicktoon episode in cartoon history. The hostile reactions I get from friends for even mentioning this episode is just astonishing. And it's no wonder. I distinctly remember seeing this episode when I was eight and feeling distraught afterwards. The story is basically our hero Arnold sees his friend Iggy in bunny pajamas. When he accidentally tells others this, he spends the whole episode suffering humiliations to repay him. This is one very nasty trope we used to see in a lot of badly made cartoon episodes, where our hero continues